Welcome to Financial Math for Actuarial Exam 2. We've been doing a lot of problems about bonds. I'm pretty anxious to get on to Chapter 5 of Broberman's book about internal rate of return and net present value. We'll do that soon, but I think we better do a few more problems about bonds, including a, an important concept called a callable bond, where the borrower, the corporation or government entity, uh, can call the bond, redeem the value of the bond, pay you, the investor, the redemption value, whenever they want according to some contract. And in such a situation, it makes the calculations a little trickier to think about. You want to maybe find something like this, find the price for getting a certain minimum yield. And also maybe, if you know the price, find the minimum yield from that price in the situation with a callable bond. Now the actual calculations themselves are not that difficult. We can just use the formulas we've always used. What's difficult about the subject is that uh, you have to think carefully. It's very easy to get confused about how to solve a problem like this. All right, so before you use any formulas, just remember with callable bonds, you need to think clearly. So let's go ahead and look at the problem. We've got a 10% bond with a face amount of 100. It's callable or redeemable on any coupon date from 15 and a half years Evidently, this is semi-annual coupon, so that would be the 31st coupon. After issue, up to the maturity date, which is 20 years, 40th coupon, from the issue. Two parts of the problem, a part A and a part B. In part A, we'll be finding the price of the bond to yield a minimum nominal annual interest rate of three different values, 12%, 10%, and 8%. Think about that before we go on here. When, you, when the yield is 12%, that's higher than the coupon rate. That means it's going to be bought at a discount. Your coupon payments are relatively small. They're not enough to cover the interest. So the balance goes up over time from the purchase price to the final redemption value. If it's bought at 8%, that's when the bond is bought at a premium. Your coupon amounts are relatively high compared to the yield rate. So you're getting more than just the interest that you are owed every coupon period and the balance goes down to the 100 here at the end. 10% would be where you buy the bond uh, at the same price as the value right after any coupon, in court, in which is also the same as the face amount, which is the redemption value here. Okay, so again, that would be premium, a discount, buying the bond at the redemption value, and this would be buying the bond at a premium. On the other hand, in part B, we're gonna be finding the minimum annual yield to maturity, when you have these different purchase price prices, 80, 100, and 120, and there it's more clear this is buying at a discount, this is buying at a premium, and this is buying at the same value as the redemption amount. All right, before just going ahead and using formulas and using our calculator, and, and by the way, in part B, we'll, we will need to use the financial functions. Uh, before doing that, think clearly. Stop, say, this is a problem about callable bonds. I need to think clearly about concepts here. So first of all, what if the bond is bought at a discount? In other words, P, the price is less than C, the redemption amount. For a callable bond, what you need to do is you need to assume the worst case scenario for you, the investor, okay? That's the key concept you should think about to help you solve these problems. When the bond is bought at a discount, again, your coupon payments are not very high. They're not even covering the interest that you are owed according to the yield rate. So the balance is going up. You know, since you're not getting very much in coupons, you would like to get that final redemption amount as soon as possible. That would be most beneficial for you. On the flip side, for the borrower, the government entity or the corporation, they want to do what's best for them. They want to delay their final redemption uh, as late as possible. So you should assume the worst case for you. You should assume that the redemption amount is paid as late as possible. Assume the redemption amount is paid as late as possible according to the terms of the contract. Which in this case would be 20 years and equals 40, 20 times 2. On the flip side of that, if the bond is bought at a premium, P is bigger than C, 
to save some time, I'm going to use, use quotes here. For a callable bond, assume, so that these quotes refer to this first line, that the redemption amount is paid as early as possible. If you buy the bond at a premium, you're paying a lot, you're getting pretty high coupons uh, to make up for that, so to speak. They are paying you more than the interest that is owed every coupon period. They're paying their balance down. It would be best for you to keep getting those extra payments as long as possible. So worst case would be if it's redeemed as early as possible. In this case, that would be 15 and a half times 2 n equals 31. Okay. What if the bond, what if P equals C? I won't bother writing that down, but that would be the situation where the redemption value and the price at any point in time, in fact, right after any coupon payment, would be the same, 100 in this case, and it really wouldn't matter when the bond is redeemed. You'd have the same yield in any situation. Now, you could use the basic formula to help you answer these questions now, but you could also use the premium discount formula, which is what Broberman chooses to do. P equals... C, the redemption value, plus, in parentheses, F times R, the coupon amount, minus C times J, times A and J. Um, if F happens to equal C, as it does here, you can simplify it to this. And by the way, we are doing the simplest type of callable bond problem. You can make it more complicated by varying how much the redeem what, how much is redeemed based on what n is okay that could definitely make it trickier and these simpler principles would not necessarily be what you want to go by especially if it was different for every single possible value of n that would be a real big pain okay but for the simplest case when the redemption value is the same no matter when the bond is called then this kind of analysis is fine okay Let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. P would then be 100 plus 100 times R is half of 10%, 0 0.05. Let me leave J unspecified and N unspecified. Okay, so we can simplify the formula a little bit to that. Now let's go ahead and think about these cases. First case, when the nominal annual rate is 20, 12%, so the effective semi-annual Yield rate J is 6%, 0 0.06. If J is 0 0.06, then you're going to get 0 0.05 minus 0 0.06 here, negative 0 0.01 times 100 is negative 1. We get 100 minus A and J. And we're going to plug in, because we are in the discount case, the largest possible value of N, N equals 40 here. Before I do so, though, let's think a little bit more about this. Let's think about this algebraically. Now, A and J... For a fixed j, I should plug in 0 0.06, is going to get bigger as n gets bigger. This increases as n increases. Since we are subtracting it, the whole quantity here for the price decreases as n increases. And I want to take a moment to think about why this makes sense compared to this comment up here. Um, so what this is saying is at a given yield rate, 6% in this case, the price is going to be as small as possible when n is as large as possible, and that is the, the value you should pick, the largest value of n, to think about the worst case scenario for you. Um, that would also mean if n were smaller, if it was redeemed earlier, the price would be higher for the given yield rate. So if you pay less, as you would when you choose a larger value of n here, if you're, if, again, if the um, bond is actually redeemed earlier, your yield is actually higher. What I'm trying to emphasize is that by plugging in the largest possible N here, you are truly finding the minimum possible yield right here. Okay? Because, again, if it was redeemed earlier for that same price, you're really getting a higher yield. Because this price for the given yield becomes higher as N gets smaller. All right? Now let's go ahead and plug in the largest possible value of n here, n equals 40, and see what we get. That'll be the answer to part 1 of part a. So we have 1.06 is 1 plus j. Its reciprocal is v. Uh, raised to the 40th power. Subtract from 1, 
divide by 0 0.06, subtract that from 100. The answer here is 84.95. And that is correct. So that's the answer for part A, part subpart 1. The answer for subpart 2 is going to be 100, okay? You don't even have to do any work. This uh, yield rate is the same as the coupon rate. The price is going to be the same as the redemption value. Uh, the J of 10% would be the same no matter when it's redeemed. In the case where you buy at a premium, when J is relatively low and the coupon rate is relatively high, this formula here becomes 100 plus if j is 0 0.04, I get 0 0.045 minus 0 0.04 is 0 0.01, times 100 is 1. So I get 100 plus a and j, where j is now 0 0.04. This once again increases as n increases, making the whole quantity here, since there's a plus sign there, now also increase as n increases. So at the given yield rate, um, if n were higher, than the earliest possible date, you'd pay more. So if you pay less, as you do here, by plugging in a smaller value of m, your actual yield would be higher. So once again, we are emphasizing that this is going to give us the minimum possible yield of 4%. By now plugging in n equals the lowest possible value, which is 31. <clears throat> All right, 1.04 reciprocal to the 31st power, subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.04, add 100 to that, the answer is 117.59, and that's correct. Okay, so this one's answer is 84.95, this one's answer is 117.59, and again this one's answer is 100, the same as the redemption value. On to part B. Okay, in part B, we're going to need to use the financial functions of the calculator. So for the first part of that, we're assuming the price is 80. You don't have to write down an equation here if you know what to just plug into the calculator. If you write down an equation, I, I'm typically most comfortable thinking about it in terms of the basic formula. 80 would be F times R is um, fi um, 5 n would be, um, well, once again, we need to think about the concepts here. We're buying at a discount here, so we want to assume it's redeemed as, redeemed as late as possible, so n would be 40 here. j is un, unknown. We have to solve for j. Redemption amount is 100. So you don't, I'm writing down that equation. You don't have to, but if it's helpful for you in terms of thinking about what to plug in the calculator, you certainly can. You could also draw a number line. So we've got n is 40, so 40 should probably go in there first, stored in n. Uh, we are paying 80 at first, and that is outgoing money, so think of it as a negative amount. That goes into PV. Five are the coupon payments, that goes into PMT. And the 100 is the redemption amount, which is the future value. 100 goes into FV. Now compute the interest rate. This is per year, but it really means per period in this context, which is per half year. 6.396%. Don't divide that by 100. It's already given as a percent. So the minimum annual yield rate would be twice that. Multiply that by 2. J or 2J, which is the answer, is about 12.79%. Okay, and that would be the minimum nominal annual yield rate. When you buy at a premium, do case three here next. P is 120. The equation is going to look like this. It's worse for you if it's redeemed as early as possible. So assume worst case here, assume N is 31. Once again, solve this equation for J. 
using financial functions. Anne is now 31. Make sure you get that in there first. Um, oops, this is a 5 here, sorry. 120 is the amount going up. Make it negative into PV. 5 are the payments coming in. And 100 at the end also comes in as a future value. And now compute interest rate per period. For half year would be 3.88%. Double this to get the nominal annual yield rate. 2J would be 7.76%. And the middle case here, where 2 where the price is 100, the yield rate as, an, as a nominal annual real rate would be the same as the annual coupon rate, 10%. Okay, so again, answers, 84.95 for A1, 100 for A2, and 117.59 for A3. For part B, part one is 12.79%. We're after a minimum annual yield to maturity. For part three, 120 is the price. Answer is 7.76%. And for part two, when the bond is purchased for 100, the answer is going to be 10%, the same as the coupon rate. Okay, so it is pretty tricky, but use these key concepts and that'll definitely help you avoid mistakes.